What is also ahead of us is our anxiety and our fear. You know, shaitan wants that you worry about the future. That you just keep worrying. What's my son going to do? Is he going to rebel? What's my daughter going to do? What's my husband going to do? What's my wife going to do? And you keep worrying about other people and what they're going to do and how they're going to feel. Like you're in charge of them or you're in control of them. We're barely in control of ourselves. But we think we can control what everybody else around us is going to do and what their future is going to be and we want to control their future. You'll have a mother dying every day. Why isn't my daughter who's married, why isn't she having a baby? When is she going to have a baby? When is she going to have a baby? And she's calling her and saying, you know Allah wants you to have a baby. Allah doesn't want her to have a baby, you want her to have a baby. I don't know what email you got from Allah that you told her. But this is in your mind, you just want these anxieties, worldly, worldly things that you want is all you think about for the future. I don't have it, I don't have it, I just worry about it, I don't know why I don't have it. And you're just consumed by that, completely consumed by that. It could be the most innocent of things, but shaitan wants you to be that way because when you do that, you're not happy with what Allah has given you, number one. And you easily forget that the one in charge is Allah. And the one in control over everyone is Allah. I am actually not in charge of my children. Once they get to a certain age, what they do is between them and Allah. All I can be is an advice, that's all I can do. But their decisions are going to be theirs. If our Messenger وسلم, can turn to his daughter and say, Ya Fatima tu bint Muhammad, ittaqillah fa inni la amliku laki min Allahi shay'a. Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, be mindful of God yourself because I won't have any control when it comes to standing in front of Allah. I won't be able to help you. That's what he tells his own daughter. So how do you and I think we have control over others, even within our family? He wants us to think we're in charge, and we want to, and that's actually something only Allah has the right to. But we, we, he, he consumes our minds with it. And of course, when you try to control people, it backfires, it never works. You can never control people. You can't control people. And when you can't control people, you get even more anxious, and you get you know, negative constantly. And when you become negative constantly, it's impossible for you to be grateful. Look at how the ayah is going to end. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ You're not going to find most of them grateful, because they're going to be negative all the time. They're going to be anxious about the future all the time. What's going to happen to my job? What's going to happen with my money? Where's this going to come from? Where's that going to come from? What's going to happen to the health? What's going to happen to the kids? What's going to happen to this or that or the other? What if they find out? What if this happens? What if this one says this? What if that one does that? And you're just so overwhelmed by these petty things that you forget that Allah controls the future. That Allah owns it, not you, not me. And the fact that we had even a good peaceful day, one day, one moment, was not because we earned it or we planned it or we controlled it. It's Allah who gives relief. Every single day, that's Allah who gives relief. The fact that our bodies are still functioning and we're sitting here in the Friday prayer is Allah giving us relief, Allah giving us ability. And we forget that and we think that we have to figure all the future out. We have to control all the outcomes. And that's one of the things shaitan wants is to make you confused about thinking that you have something to do with the future. One of the greatest tricks of the shaitan is to make you pessimistic about the future. Nothing's gonna work out, it's all gonna be bad, nothing ever worked anyway, it's always gonna fail. You become so negative that you, not only are you negative about your own self, you become, your negativity becomes infectious. Even people around you. Somebody's happy about something, somebody graduated, you're like, yeah, but you're not really gonna get a job. You just have to throw in some kind of negative, because you know, just our luck. Runs in the family, don't worry about it. You just, and th this is the pessimism of the devil. He wants that from you because <laughs> if, a, if a person is pessimistic, then how can they have pessimism and hope in Allah? How can they have pessimism and reliance in Allah? Then with what heart are they making dua to Allah? If they've already accepted defeat inside, then nothing's gonna work out. Then they have no expectation from Allah. Then they're the most essential relationship we have with Allah, which is that of asking Him, having hope in Him. You cut that off. You have, you're hopeless. And what is shaitan by definition? He's hopeless. By definition, he's hopeless. And he wants you to become hopeless. These are his attacks from the front.